World War II, 1933 to 1945. FDR, like most Americans in the early 1930s, wanted to keep the United States out of global conflicts while remaining engaged in global trade. As totalitarian governments based on ultranationalism and militarism rose in Europe and Asia, Roosevelt sought to keep the United States out of the war by supporting Great Britain, France, and the nationalists in China. These ties ultimately pulled the United States into the war, especially after Japan attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. I have broken up the study of World War II chronologically by the years from the rise of the fascist governments to the ending of the war. So instead of like the textbook that we cover the entire European war and then go to the beginning of the Pacific War after Pearl Harbor to the end of the war, students will cover both the Pacific and European theaters in the years as it happened. Focus questions. How did German and Japanese actions lead to the outbreak of war in Europe and Asia? Two, how did President Roosevelt and Congress respond to the outbreak of wars in Europe and Asia between 1933 and 1941? Three, what were the effects of the Second World War on American society? Four, what major factors enabled the United States and its allies to win the war in Europe, specifically major battles? Five, how were the Japanese defeated in the war in the Pacific? And six, how did President Roosevelt and the Allies work to shape a post-war world? The Rise of Fascism and Militarism, 1922 through 1936. From 1922 through 1936, the world would see the rise of fascism and totalitarian dictators in Italy, the Soviet Union, Germany, and Japan. Italy, before the war, Italy denied territory gains in the Versailles Treaty and the cost of living going up to 500% between 1914 to 1919. Unemployment was rising. There was social unrest and the fear of communists. Benito Mussolini, a former newspaper editor, promises to rescue Italy by reviving the economy and rebuilding the armed forces. At first, he failed to gain support. He had formed the Fascist Party from former World War I veterans that wore black shirts. Groups of fascists wearing these black shirts would beat up communists and socialists. He quickly began to win support from the middle and upper classes. The term fascist comes from the symbol that you see there with the ax and a bundle of rods tied around it. It is called a fascist. That was the symbol of the Roman senator and the same symbol that you'll be able to find in the United States Senate Chamber. On March 24th, 1922, 30,000 fascists marched on Rome and asked for Mussolini to become the new prime minister. King Victor Emmanuel III would appoint Mussolini as prime minister. He quickly established an authoritarian rule, abolishing democracy outlaws all political parties except the fascist party. He implements censorship, and Mussolini promised to bring Italy back to the glory days of Rome. Hitler and Germany. Hitler was an Austrian and wanted to attend the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, but they reject his application. While living in Austria, his hatred for the Jews begins. When the Great War began, he joined the German army and would be awarded the Iron Cross twice. He had also would be blinded by chlorine gas. When the war ended, he was hired in 1919 by the Bavarian government to infiltrate the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party. Instead of reporting their activities, he joined them and becomes the party's Führer, or leader. On November 8th, 1923, 600 Nazis surround the beer hall to announce the National Revolution has begun. Goring and Hitler march and try to seize power in Munich, but is stopped by the German police. Goring is wounded. Hitler is tried and sentenced to five years. In prison, he'll write his autobiography, Mein Kampf, which was fascism based on the stream nationalism. Mein Kampf means my struggle. Hitler wrote that Aryans were the master race, blonde haired and blue eyed. The Jews, Slavs, and Gypsies were non white inferior races, arguing that Germany required Lebensraum or living space in Eastern Europe.
Nazi leaders. Hermann Göring, pictured in the upper right, was a member of the old German aristocracy and was a World War I flying ace. He flew with the Red Baron. He had been awarded the Brule Merite, and from his wounds in the pooch, he had become addicted to morphine. When the Nazis take over, he'll become the chief of the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. He had also formed the Gestapo, the secret police. Joseph Goebbels, the one pictured below, ent denied entry into World War I because he had a club foot. He studied philosophy, history, literature, and art and earned a PhD. He was a failure as a playwright. He would be in charge of propaganda as a Nazi. Goebbels was famous for saying, if you tell a lie often enough, the people will believe it's the truth. Heinrich Himmer, up in the top left, in the furthest left in the picture with the glasses, was a part-time chicken farmer. He was also in charge of book burnings for the Nazi party and would form the Schustaffel, or the SS. They were soldiers who gave their loyalty to Hitler only, and they had to prove that they were pure Aryan, and he would later on would take over the Gestapo. All three were part of Hitler's inner circle, and they distrusted and disliked one another. The Nazis take control. By 1930, Hitler's National Socialist Party emerged as the majority party in Germany, winning 107 seats in the German Reichstag, which is their Congress. In 1933, the Weimar Republic collapsed, and President Hindenburg appointed Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. The conservatives believed they could control him. As Chancellor, Hitler would call for new elections. Six days before the elections, the Reichstag that you see to the right was burnt to the ground. The German Parliament building. German communists were blamed for the fire. The Nazis had actually set the fire. The Nazi party would win the majority of the seats. Using Germans' distaste for the Treaty of Versailles, the armistice signed by the November criminals, and German economic collapse, blamed on the huge reparations funded by the Allies, Hitler would emerge as a strong man dictator. In 1934, Hitler combined the office of Chancellor and President, after Himmelberg would die in office, to create the office of Führer, and slowly consolidating power by outlawing freedom of the press, labor unions, and political parties except the Nazi party. To control the people, work was done to build the Nazi war machine and the people were controlled by propaganda. Books are burned. No church could criticize the Nazi. And the Nuremberg Laws would forbid Jews to hold public office, teach, practice medicine, fly the German flag, which was now the swastika flag, and they had to wear the yellow star of David. The 1936 Berlin Games. Germany hosted the Olympics both winter and summer, but it was the Summer Olympics that they were interested in. Goebbels was hoping to vindicate Nazi beliefs in Aryan superiority, and it was the Nazis who started the tradition of lighting the torch in Athens and bringing it to the Olympic site in Berlin. This is supposed to be symbolic, as the Nazis claiming to be Aryan and showing a connection to ancient Greece. But this would all backfire when they're embarrassed by a black American, Jesse Owens, who won four gold medals, the 100 meter, the 200 meter, the 4x400 meter relay team, and the long jump. When Hitler snubbed the American athlete, the Olympic Committee ruled that if Hitler could not honor each winner, he could not honor any of them. But the interesting side story is Lutz Long, the man you see pictured there with the Nazi salute behind Jesse Owens. It is Long that actually helped Jesse Owens qualify for the long jump. Previously, Owens had fouled twice, one more, and he'd be eliminated from the competition. Long told Owens, just jump before the board, and showed him by waving a handkerchief how far he needed to go in order to qualify. Owens finally qualified on his third and his last attempt, and would go on to win the gold medal. Owens and Long became good friends. Unfortunately, Long would lose his life on the Russian front during the Second World War. 25 years later, Lutz Long's son called Jesse Owens and asked him if he'd be his best man, serving as proxy for his father, who admired Owens. 
Owens would fly to Berlin and stand in for his friend, Lutz Long. Imperial Japan, the first you see pictured there is the Emperor, Hirohito. The peace treaty with China would respect the territory integrity of China in 1922. But the cult of the emperor would emerge, strict limits on the prime minister and his cabinet. The army would only answer to the emperor and implemented the Bushido Code, the Code of the Samurai. The militarist dream of territorial expansion and gain control of Japan, the need of raw materials to, and to win markets for Japan and space for a crowding population. The Soviet Union. In 1924, Joseph Stalin would take control of the Soviet Union after the death of Lenin. He begins collective farms, basically something farmers had similar under the old peasant system under the czars. His five-year plan would, force, would be a forced plan of industrialization and began in 1928. In the purges, it's estimated that he was responsible for the death of 20 million people. Most of them were political enemies. Some were generals that were killed in the purges or sent to the camps in Siberia and gulags. Dilemmas of Neutrality, 1932-1939 Italy invades Ethiopia. Italy was defeated by Ethiopia early in 1888, and Mussolini sought revenge and invaded the African nation in October of 1935. The Italians used planes, tanks, gas, and machine guns against Ethiopians, mostly armed with spears and swords. But it would take six months before the Italians would defeat the very brave Ethiopians. When Emperor Haile Selassie appealed to the League of Nations, who proclaimed Italy as an aggressor, Italy withdrew from the League of Nations. Emperor Selassie of Ethiopia would declare, It is us today. It'll be you tomorrow. Britain and France attempted to soothe Benito Mussolini with the Hora Laval Pact, which granted to Italy control of a large portion of Ethiopia and allowed Italy to use the Suez Canal. Spain, General Miguel Primo de Rivera, and the end of the parliamentary government in 1923 would set up a dictatorship which would collapse in 1930 during the Great Depression. In 1931, King Alfonso XIII would leave Spain. The Spanish Civil War would unfold as the Popular Front, a republic, was established as a coalition of Democrats, Socialists, and Leftists. General Francisco Franco, a right-wing leader, would lead the revolt against the Popular Front. Foreign intervention by Adolf Hitler uses the Civil War as a proving ground for his new weapons, such as the bombing of the village of Granica to test the Stuka dive bomber. Mussolini also contributed to Franco's side. The Soviet Union provided military uh, material for the populist front. United States, France, and Britain remained neutral. They did not stop the Abraham Lincoln Brigade of the United States to fight against Franco. Franco emerged victorious on March 28, 1939, and captures Madrid. 400,000 Spaniards would die, one quarter on the battlefield, another 200,000 are going to be executed. The Franco regime was traditional conservative dictatorship. Picasso painted Granica at his home in Paris, and what you see in the background, in response to the bombing of the village, a Basque country town in northern Spain by Nazi Germany and fascist Italy at the request of Spanish nationalists. The Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere The earliest fascist aggression took place when Japan launched a brutal invasion of China. Japan would invade China's province of Manchuria and the League of Nations would condemn the action, but does nothing. Japan would withdraw from the League of Nations in March of 1933. On July 7, 1937, a firefight breaks out between Japanese soldiers and Chinese forces 20 miles from Beijing. Japan would use this as an excuse to invade the rest of China and begins World War II in Asia. Chiang Kai-shek would lead the Chinese Nationalist Army and Mao Zedong would head the Communist forces. 
but it was the troubling Nas Nanking massacre, or the Nanjing massacre, as known as the rape of Nanking, when a mass murder in of the war and rape that occurred during the six week period following the Japanese capture of the city, the former capital of the Republic of China, on December 13, 1937. During the Second Sino Japanese War, in which hundreds of thousands of Chinese civilians and disarmed soldiers were murdered by soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army, widespread rape and looting also occurred. Historians have wit and witnesses have estimated between 250,000 to 300,000 people were killed, as you see in this picture, as a Chinese civilian was tied up to the post to be used as bayonet practice. German aggression, building up the military. In October 1933, Germany withdrew from the Geneva Disarmament Conference and the League of Nations, causing a conference to collapse the next year without German participation. In January 1934, Germany signed a non-aggressive pact with Poland, and in March 1934, Universal Conscription raised an army of 550,000 and a substantial air force, violations of the Versailles Treaty. Britain, France, and Italy condemned German actions in the League of Nations, but did not back up their words, effectively killing the Treaty of Versailles. Britain permitted Germany to have a navy a third of their size. On the Rhineland, on March 7, 1936, German reoccupation of the Rhineland went unchallenged by the French. On November 17, the anti pact in 1937 between Germany, Japan, and Italy. In the spring of 1938, Pro-Nazi Austrians, aided by German troops, voted in favor of an Anschluss, a union of Austria and Germany, another violation of the Versailles Treaty. However, it was a sham election. They did not include those voters, especially Jews and liberals, who had voted against the union. Mussolini would con congratulate Hitler on his success. Other European nations failed to respond to the German expansion and the Nazi treatment of Jews. On March 13, 1938, Germany annexed Austria after forcing Austrian Chancellor Karl Schlesnick to abdicate before Germany sent in troops to restore order. The Munich Agreement On September 30, 1938, Hitler announced plans to annex the Sudetenland, which contained three million Germans, which had been taken away from Germany after the Great War and given to Czechoslovakia. FDR sent personal notes to France, Britain, Germany, and Czechoslovakia asking for a peaceful solution to be sought. The French Eduardo Dalachuk and British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain chose appeasement over standing up to Hitler, thinking that allowing him to take Sudeten would stop his aggression. Czechoslovakia was absent from the conference. Hitler guaranteed certain rights to the Czech minorities located in the territory and stated that he desired no more further European territory. Neville Chamberlain's prime minister of Great Britain famously claimed that the resulting Munich Pact ensured peace for our time, peace with honor. British Foreign Minister Anthony Eden, Eden resigned in protest. Winston Churchill, then a member of the British Parliament, argued that Church Chamberlain had instead chosen shame and ultimately war because Hitler would break his promise and insist on taking other parts of Europe. On October 3rd, American public opinion favored the agreement. However, on March 14, 1939, Hitler invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia, which voided the agreement. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was a five year non-aggressive pact with the Soviet Union signed on August 23, 1939 by Foreign Ministers Joachim von Ribbentrop of Germany and Vyacheslav Molotov of the Soviet Union, and was officially known as the Treaty of Non-Aggression between Germany and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Hitler entered into Stalin, who, unsure of Western support, 
hoped to gain time to prepare for an expected future German attack. Commercial provisions, it provided commercial provisions as well as allowing Germany to get food and other supplies if Germany was blockaded by sea, again, as would happen in World War I. On 24th August, the pact became public knowledge. This came as a shocking around the world who viewed Nazism and communism as mortal enemies. In secret parts, it permitted the Soviets to take parts of Poland that Germany did not plan to take, and once public, this agreement with the communist nation temporarily softened relations between Germany and Japan, who saw it as a violation of the anti comintern pact. The anti-business climate caused Senator Gerald P. Nye of North Dakota to investigate armament sales and manufacturing during the Great War, revealing that huge profits have been made by American financiers and munitions manufacturers. The committee's investigation continued until 1936, confirming the view that wars were fought to profit a small minority, but evidence was inconclusive in determining if it, it the convert efforts of these same groups had aided the U.S. entry into the war on the Allied side. This investigation set up the stage for the rise of isolationist sentiment in the United States. A series of neutrality acts passed by 1935 to 1939 was a more serious act, though which stated that the president had remarkably munitions to all belligerent civil war and U.S. citizens could travel freely into war zones. And they also prohibited extended credit to belligerent nations and it will even include civil war such as the Spanish Civil War. It expanded the embargo, listing commodities, and limited to a cash and carry system, effectively limiting U.S. ships from carrying goods into war zones. FDR had to recognize an armed conflict existed before the embargo could be valid. Unfortunately, the embargo applied only to armaments and not to raw materials which could produce munitions, allowing Japan and the war in China continued to purchase from the United States items such as scrapped iron, copper, and oil. Hitler invades Poland. Hitler demanded that the Danzig province between Germany and Russia, which gave Poland access to the sea, claiming that German minorities were mistreated by the Poles. Britain and France declared that if Hitler tried to take it by force, they would declare war on Germany. Of course, since Britain and France's appeasement attitude and doing nothing, as they saw Hitler take the Rhineland, Austria, and Czechoslovakia, Hitler would call their bluff and invade Poland on September 1st, 1939. On September 3rd, 1939, after ignoring the ultimatum to stop invading Poland, both France and Britain declared war in Germany, while Belgium immediately declared its neutrality. Although promising aid and soldiers, Britain and France would do neither to help Poland. Germany introduced Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War, which involved the concentration of infantry, armor, and aircraft, Mark II tanks, half-tracks, and Stuka dive bombers to punch and exploit holes in the opposing defensive lines. Germany swiftly marched onto Warsaw and by September 17th demanded the full surrender of Poland while the Soviet Union invaded the eastern half of Poland. The Polish government would go into exile into London, and on September 27th, Warsaw fell to Germany's military superiority. On September 28th, Germany and the Soviet Union divided Poland into two parts. Germany used a combination of Poland suffering over 60,000 casualties to Germany's 6,000 casualties. Phony War and the Axis Agreement Because of the lull in fighting in the winter of 1939-1940, this war was dubbed by the world press the Phony War. The German press called it Sitzenkrieg, or the Sit-Down War. Mussolini and Hitler would sign the Axis Agreement in the fall of 1939, called the Axis Powers because Hitler and Mussolini believed that the world rotates on the Axis, therefore the continent of Europe would rotate on the German-Italian Axis. Trying to keep out. According to the Gallup polls throughout the 1930s, 70% of Americans expressed that they would 
that becoming involved in another world war would be a mistake. The United States refused to recognize the division of Poland and continued to maintain diplomatic relations with the former government in exile. Strong American isolationist sentiment limited President Roosevelt's ability to help Britain and its allies. America's first committee was a non-intervention span the political spectrum from leftist labor unions to ultra-conservative business leaders, especially Charles Lindbergh, who would argue, why can't Germany have an empire since Great Britain has an empire and also a large navy? In October 1939, Congress passed a measure that allowed armed sales to belligerents on a cash basis called cash and carry. Britain and France were the only expected customers. They would bring their ships over, pay cash for the supplies they needed, load it up on their ships, and they would take the risk of taking it back to Europe. There was large anti-Semitism in the country, and isolation restricted U.S. aid to Jewish refugees. Britain Stands Alone, 1940. At the year, end of the year of 1940, Britain will find themselves as the only European country to stand up against Nazi Germany, Blitzkrieg of Western Europe. The invasion of Norway and Denmark. On April 9, 1940, the rapid invasion of the northern Scandinavian nations revealed how ill-prepared Europe was for war. Copenhagen fell within 12 hours. A British-French force attempted to aid Norway, but was withdrawn by May 2nd. Britain would occupy Iceland May 9th to prevent its fall to Germany. On June 9th, the King of Norway ended the fighting against Germany, and on June 11th, Denmark also succumbed to Germany. And the invasion of the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Belgium began on May 10th. Neville Chamberlain's government collapsed after Germany invaded these nations, elevating to Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who had warned of German war preparations. Between the 14th and 15th of May, the Dutch government fled in exile to London while its army surrendered. King Leopold III of Belgium surrendered. The Battle of Dunkirk, May 26 to June 4, in one of the most widely debated decisions in the war, the Germans halted their advance on Dunkirk. Contrary to popular belief, which became the halt order, did not originate with Adolf Hitler. Gerd von Rundstedt and Gunther von Klug suggested that the German forces around the Dunkirk pocket should cease their advance on the port and consolidate to avoid the Allied break. Hitler sanctioned the order on May 24th with the support of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht and the army was to halt for three days, giving the Allies time to organize an evacuation and build a defensive line. Despite the Allies' gloomy estimates of the situation, with Britain discussing a conditional surrender to Germany, in the end, over 330,000 Allied troops were rescued from the beaches of Dunkirk. This was called Operation Dynamo. Churchill's famous radio speech on June 1st of We Shall Fight on the Beaches and the Landing Grounds encouraged British resistance to Germany. France Falls the Maginot Line was France's great defensive line built along its common boundary with Germany. German troops bypassed the line going through Belgium to invade France by going through the Ardennes uh, like they did in the Great War on June the 5th. The French government, seeing what had happened to the other European capitals, Warsaw, Copenhagen, Brussels, being destroyed by the Luftwaffe, wanted to avoid the same thing to happen to their beloved Paris, and so they surrendered. To add insult to injury, Hitler ordered representatives of the French government to sign the document of surrender in the same railway car that the Germans signed the armistice ending World War I. On June 14th, German troops entered Paris. The instrument of surrender set up a Vichy unoccupied France led by Marshal Henri Philippe Pétain, headed by the government of France. Pétain would establish a pro-Nazi puppet government. A French government in exile in London was led by General Charles de Gaulle. Britain now remained the only Western power to oppose Adolf Hitler. The Axis Powers In September of 1940, Germany, Italy, and Japan would meet in Berlin to sign the official alliance creating the Axis Powers. 
Although miffed at Germany for its non-aggressive pact with Stalin, initially almost immediate successes of Germany in Europe rekindled interest in Japan for better relations with Berlin. Articles in the tripartite pact included Article 3, specifically aimed at the United States. It basically said that Germany, Italy, Japan agreed to assist one another with all political, economic, and military means if one of the three contacting powers is attacked by the power at present not involved in the European war or in the Chinese-Japanese conflict, which at that time was the United States. Article 5 specifically excluded the Soviet Union. So in other words, if a war would occur between one of the Axis power and the Soviet Union, the other two were not inclined to declare war on the Soviet Union. The Battle of Britain would take place from July 10th to October 31st, 1940. Having conquered France and nations to the north, Hitler launched an air attack against Britain to soften them up in the preparation of a German invasion across the channel, codenamed Operation Sea Lion. Goring had convinced Hitler that the Luftwaffe would be able to destroy the Royal Air Force and that the Allies will never drop one bomb on Berlin. The Luftwaffe was somewhat successful on the coast in an attempt to knock out airfields and a new weapon of war, radar installations. However, they accidentally would strike a British city. Churchill's response was to bomb Berlin. And this is what happened. And Hitler would change the tactics because he was enraged and then orders the bombing of British cities, mostly London and Manchester, the city that gave birth to the Industrial Revolution. London. King George V and Queen Elizabeth refused to leave London when the Queen was approached by a young British officer trying to implore her to leave Buckingham Palace. Her response was, my dear young man, the only thing you need to teach me is how to use that weapon of yours so I can kill those bastards when they arrive. Their presence in London during the Blitz was a huge morale boost for the Londoners. The British had broken the German code and discovered the target for their bombing was Coventry. Churchill had to make a gut-wrenching decision. Do you let Coventry be bombed or do you evacuate the population? If you decide to evacuate the population, German spies could have discovered that the German secret code had indeed been broken. Churchill decided to let Coventry be bombed and use the code for future use. September 15th was the climax of the Battle of Britain, when 56 German aircraft were destroyed. The end result, the British would lose 915 aircraft during the Battle of Britain, and Germany, according to the records, would lose 1,733. Churchill would attribute the victory in the Battle of Britain to the Royal Air Force, the RAF. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. American Reaction American public opinion polls in 1938-1940 40 showed that the American people believed that the nation should fight only if directly attacked. More than 80% of Americans supported continued restrictions on immigration, and most Americans believed that the nation had been wrong to enter the Great War. The collapse of France scared Americans into rearming, and Congress passed laws to expand the army, build planes and ships, and institute the first peacetime draft in United States history. In 1940, FDR established the National Defense Advisory Committee and the Council of National Defense to plan the war preparedness strategy. In the 1940 presidential election, Roosevelt decided to break tradition and run for a third term, believing with the war looming in Europe, the United States needed a strong leader and was prepared. Republicans nominated Wendell Wilkie. One of the biggest problems Wilkie faced is that he actually agreed with all the steps that FDR was taking. Roosevelt was elected to a third term in 1940 very easily. Here we see the map of the Axis Europe in 1941 on the eve of Hitler's invasion to the Soviet Union. 
After almost two years of war, the Axis powers controlled most of Europe from the Atlantic Ocean to the Soviet border. Through annexation, military conquest, and new alliances, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria would join the Axis powers. Failure to force Britain to make peace caused Hitler to look eastward in 1941 to attempt to conquest the Soviet Union. Here we see the map of the Axis Europe in 1941 on the eve of Hitler's invasion to the Soviet Union. After almost two years of war, the Axis powers controlled most of Europe from the Atlantic Ocean to the Soviet border. Through annexation, military conquest, and new alliances, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria would join the Axis powers. Failure to force Britain to make peace caused Hitler to look eastward in 1941 to attempt to conquest the Soviet Union. The world turned upside down when we see the entrance of the Soviet Union and the United States on the side of the Allies. The Brink of War, the Lend-Lease Act. An act to further promote the defense of the United States. On December 17, 1940, in a fireside chat, FDR proposed what would become known as the Lend-Lease, illustrated by his garden hose analogy. Suppose my neighbor's house catches fire, and I have a length of garden hose full of 500 feet away. If he can take my garden hose and connect it up to his hydrant, I may help him put out the fire. Now what do I do? I don't say to him before the operation, neighbor, my garden hose cost me $15. You have to pay me $15 for it. What is the transaction that goes on? I don't want $15. I want my garden hose back after the fire is over. FDR proposed the U.S. get away from the dollar sign, and we will say to England, we'll give you the guns and the ships you need, provided that when the war is over, you'll return the kind, the guns and the ships that we have loaned to you. The program began in 1941, through which the United States would transfer military equipment to Britain and the other allies of World War II. FDR recommended Lend-Lease to Congress and urged its passage. He also enunciated his four freedom speech, a freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, and freedom from want. On March 11, 1941, Congress approved Lend-Lease with an initial appropriation of $7 billion, just in time for Britain, who had exhausted its credit by purchasing war and materials. Any nation which the president considered threatened and vital to the defense of the United States could receive arms and other supplies or equipment by sale, transfer, exchange, or lease. The Atlantic Charter Roosevelt and Churchill met secretly off Newfoundland to map out military strategy and post-war goals, and it was called the Atlantic Charter, which was formulated and announced on August 14, 1941. The eight principles provided a purpose for fighting war, including a renunciation of all aggression, self-determination of peoples, equal access to raw materials, guarantees for freedom from want and fear, freedom of the seas, disarmament of the aggressor nations, and by September 24th, several anti-Axis nations, including the Soviets, China, Belgium, Norway, Luxembourg, Czechoslovakia, the Netherlands, Poland, Yugoslavia and nine Latin American countries endorsed a plan, which would become the blueprint for the United Nations. The United States decided to build a two ocean navy, which antagonized Japan. The United States was also restricting imports of steel, iron ore, and aluminum to Japan. After the Japanese invaded French Indochina, FDR froze Japanese assets in the United States and blocked all oil imports. The Invasion of the Soviet Union Hitler offered the British a higher role in his reconstructed world if they surrendered, because after all, the British Isles were settled earlier by Germanic tribes. Britain's failure to surrender caused Hitler to make a critical assumption that the British anticipated either Soviet or American help. To counter the United States, Hitler encouraged Japan to move against British holdings in the Far East to divert U.S. attention away from Europe. The invasion was called Operation Barbarossa, was a war of annihilation and conquest. 
The Nazis had long viewed Eastern Europe as inferior and long-standing hatred of the communists. Hitler invaded the USSR along a 2,000-mile stretch between Ukraine and the Arctic. The invasion also marked a turning point by pulling the Soviet Union into the war on the Allied side. The Soviet Union would bear the brunt of the fighting against the German front forces. However, the Soviets' determination and supplies sent by the United States in the harsh winter eventually slowed and stopped the German advance. To counter possible Soviet aid, Japan and Italy, because the Tripart Pact excluded the Soviets in Article 5, neither would declare war. Hitler declared that superior Germans did not need the help of half lacquered monkeys to defeat the Russians. And so certain of victory, he did not allow his army to take winter gear into the Soviet Union for fear German soldiers might expect winter. On June 24, 1941, the U.S. provided immediate aid to the Soviet Union under Lend Lease. Rapid advancement, Germans advanced rapidly into the interior of the Soviet Union. By mid-August, they had taken most of the Ukraine. The Ukrainians actually greeted the German army as liberators from Stalin. However, when Goring arrived three days later, he said, that's not going to happen. We're going to kill them all. By mid-September, they had reached Leningrad, and by mid-November, they had reached the outskirts of Moscow. When winter set in, Stalin called for his troops stationed in Siberia, used to harsh winter conditions for fighting, and stalled the Nazi advancement. The Day of Infamy United States and Japanese relations deteriorated. Japanese aggression against French Indochina in September 1940 resulted in an October U.S. embargo of scrap iron and steel to any nation outside the Western Hemisphere except Great Britain. With Japan's occupation of Indochina in the summer of 1941, FDR froze all Japanese credits in the United States, nationalized forces in the Philippines under General Douglas MacArthur's command, and warned Japan against any further aggressive actions in the East. In October 1941, Hideki Tojo would become Prime Minister of Japan, and they would attack the British and Dutch installations in the East, avoiding confrontation at the U.S. at all costs. By October 1941, signs appeared that Japan might attack a U.S. Pacific possession. After diplomatic meetings to negotiate to an end to Japanese involvement in China broke down, Tojo wanted to go to war. Admiral Yamamoto, the man you see pictured to the left, who had once studied and lived in the United States, was against it. He understood the industrial might and resolve of the United States. His plan, the Japanese government approved, to bomb the U.S. Navy at anchor in Pearl Harbor in the territory of Hawaii and attempt to destroy as much as possible the U.S. naval fleet, forced the United States no other choice but to sue for peace. The Japanese Navy was able to secretly move towards Hawaii, and on December 7, 1941, the first wave would strike at Pearl Harbor and also the various Army Air Corps fields at 7.55 in the morning. The second wave would hit at 8.54 in the morning. They came by total surprise. North of the island was actually radar stations that actually picked up the wave of Japanese airplanes. When the privates called back to their lieutenant, inquiring about the blips they see on their new radar screen, they were told, don't worry about it, Mac. It's B-17s we were expecting to flying in this morning. On December 7, 1941, at 7.55 a.m. Honolulu time, Japanese bombers launched the sneak attack upon the United States base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, hoping to cripple the U.S. Navy. Japan would sink four battleships, the Arizona, which you see pictured there, the California, the Utah, and Oklahoma, and seriously damaged two, the West Virginia and Nevada. Nineteen ships were sunk or disabled, 170 planes were lost, and 2,403 civilian and military personnel were killed, and 1,178 were wounded. Japan would also launch simultaneous attacks on the Philippines, Wake Island, Guam, Midway Islands, and on the British forces at Hong Kong and in the Malay Peninsula. 
Not only did the attack catch the U.S. off guard, it also surprised Japan's allies. That evening, Japan announced that it had officially declared war on the United States. Admiral Husband Kimmel, commander at Pearl Harbor, was relieved of command and replaced with Chester Nimitz, commander of the Pacific Fleet. A date which will live in infamy. On December 8th, the day following the attack on Pearl Harbor, FDR asked Congress to declare war on Japan by saying, Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The distance of Hawaii from Japan makes it obvious that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. During the intervening time, the Japanese government was deliberately sought to deceive the United States by false statements and expressions of hope for continued peace. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through the absolute victory. The Senate voted 82 to zero for war. The House 381, 88 to one. The lone dissenter was Jeanette Rankin of Montana, a Republican who had voted no to go to war in World War I, making her the only person to vote against both, stating as a woman, I cannot go to war and I refuse to send anyone else. What made the speech so powerful is Japan previously, before they ever attacked an allied nation, had already declared war. But due to problems of looking at the actual message and to break it down the Japanese code and to write it in English, once the war declaration of war was presented to the Secretary of State of the United States, the bombs were already dropping on Pearl Harbor, making it look more like a sneak attack. The aftermath of Pearl Harbor. On December 11th, under the terms of the Tripartite Pact, Article 3, Germany and Italy declared war on the United States, which reciprocated by declaring war on them without debating the issue in Congress, unanimously except one voting president in each case, Rankin. On 19th December, military conscription is now extended to men ages 20 to 44. It is thought that Admiral Yamamoto stated, I fear that all we have done is awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with a terrible resolve. This has never been proven to be true. And the reluctant Admiral Hiriki Agawa gives a quotation from a reply by Admiral Yamamoto to Ogata Takatora on January 9, 1942, which is similar to the famous version. A military man can scarcely pride himself on having smitten a sleeping enemy. It is more a matter of shame, something for the one smitten. I would rather you made your appraisal after seeing what the enemy does, since it is certain that angered and outraged, it will soon launch a determined counterattack. It does give us some insight of the fear of Yamamoto in fighting the United States, especially since the declaration of war from Japan did not arrive until hours after Pearl Harbor was attacked. The Allies now included the United States, as well as the Soviet Union, Great Britain, France, China, and other nations. In 1941, the war was fought in six fronts, North Africa, Eastern Europe, the North Atlantic, China, Southeast Asia, and the Central Pacific. The Allies focused on defeating Germany first.